Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial of Friends of Motion. And today I'm going to dive into the Cinema 40 2024 particle system. I'm going to show you how to make this colorful radial particle animation by using Flock, Color Mapper and Turbulence modifiers. And then at the end, we're going to render it out in Redshift and I'll show you how to customize the particles so that you have a nice final render. Let's jump in. Okay, so we are here now in my very basic scene where it's just a plane and two lights. Area lights that you can find in here and the area lights are nothing fancy to them. One is sort of like a fill light and the other one is quite bright at seven. Then we are going to use this, uh, a layout that I'm using for my particles, but I just want to show you how to get to it. So basically this is my layout that I'm using. And as you can see, all these modifiers are already set on the left and I, and I kind of wish that cinema has this as one of the tabs up here but it doesn't I'm sure that it will eventually become one of the tabs but just so you can also create this setup this customized palette um, I'll show, show you quickly how to do that you are just going to go here to simulate forces and click on these double dotted lines to so undock it and then you drag this whole thing until you see this highlight on the panel and you just drop it to see how now I have to obviously but um just to give you an idea and then to customize this now you have to um customize the palettes and you'll see it'll start highlighting like this and now you can start adding a whole bunch of the other ones so I'm going to undock this and unfortunately you'll have to manually drag them in one at a time it's very annoying and then to get a nice break like these, you need to go here to group separator and it will do this. And you just have to do it for all of it. So I just want to show you how to get to that, but it's really nice to have it on the left here because it's like a artist with your palettes and your paint. And if you have to go constantly into this section and go find the modifier, it's, it's really annoying. So I would highly recommend customizing your scene so that you have it like this and hopefully in the future it will be a tab that comes with cinema and remember if you once you're happy with your setup just go here in windows and then save it out save save layout as you could even save it as your startup layout if that's what you like but um yeah it's really useful all right so i'm gonna shut down my redshift close it just so that i have a nice open so a nice big scene to work at and I'm going to start with the basic emitter and I want a circle and I want the circle to be 90 degrees. So let me just show you what it looks like when I start with this. The particles will go up, but because we want this kind of radial pulse, I want this to be, if I click on the properties, I'm going to click here on direction and I'm going to say ra uh, radial. So you'll see it will go out. I also want it to Pulse, so this is where you go to the emissions tab, and this is sort of what you tell how fast, how, what kind of rate, how many. So I want, let's just start with a thousand. Then I want it to pulse for 10 frames, and there should be a gap for 30 frames. So now we already have a very nice system, and let's change this circle diameter to. 10, 10, 10. And I feel this system here is kind of what you need a lot of things for motion graphics, whether it's, you know, an explosion or some ripples on a pond or, you know, this is just a really nice, simple system to create ripples going out. So Emetric always comes with a particle group and you create it. And they are like um, together. So, and I see the particle group almost like the DNA of the emitter. So it's the color, the movement, the, the uh, characteristics is going to be inside this particle group. So let me show you what I mean with that. I'm going to add a color mapper and this, and just so you know, the, the particles comes with a color already and you can change it here. It will actually render. Let's just say we change this to a colorful rainbow. You'll see it starts spitting out rainbow colors. Um, you can also decide just random. It will be like confetti. And this will actually render. So if you go into, let me open my render, my redshift render. 
it will actually render it will actually just be very ugly but it de definitely already has some characteristics and i'm going to show you how to customize these balls as well but just for now you so you know it will render in those colors that you see it but the one thing it that you would might get confused with. If you go to the particle group and you'll see there's a size here, this size would only update in the port in the viewport, but it won't update in the render. So this is purely just for your viewing while you're building it. So you can maybe make it arrows or ticks or whatever, but it won't render. So just so you know, it's a little bit confusing, but once you know how it works, it's easy to remember. So going back to the particles, if you change the radius here, you will see that it will actually update in the render view. So let's just render it quickly. See how big it is now. And also one thing that I didn't realize is that this particle simulation is not really a pure simulation. It kind of, let me just put this back to dots. As you can see, it actually, they clumping on top of each other. So it's really just a, a fake simulation, I guess, or a, no, it is a, it is a simulation, but it's not respecting each other's, each individual particle space. And we're going to fix that too. So this is just sort of a global <laughs> rundown of how particles work. And just to give you like a overall idea, I'm going to switch off my redshift view and I am going to show you. So this is the color that now it spawned, but I want to customize the color and to customize it, I'm going to use a color mapper. And I'm going to put the color mapper in my particle group. And just to, to take, you know, to re-emphasize the fact that I'm going to call this DNA pulse one. And this is pulse one. So anything that we are going to put inside this DNA pulse one is going to be the characteristics of pulse one. So the good thing about this is now, if you have another emitter, both emitters can share the same DNA. And that's why I'm calling a DNA because I feel like I understand it as a, as a minion. This is going to override the color it's doing right now. So I'm going to play it. Let me show you what's happening. Now, the reason it's red is because this whole gradient is almost like a timeline. And as you can see here, everything is zero. So that means it's stuck on frame zero that is red. And since we are working with the age of the particle, so it's going to be 300 frames if you look at the timeline, the, if you change this to 300, then it should be blue at the end of the, the timeline because we're working with the age in the property. But not the whole emitter, it's just the age of each individual particle. So when the particle is zero frames old, it's red. And when the particle is 300 frames old, it's blue. Now, if you want that blue to appear quicker, then you just need to cut down the time here at 150 and you'll see it will at 150 frames, it will be blue, but then it will stay blue. And if you want it to loop, like start being red again, you just check on this little repeat button, but you'll see there's a very hard edge. So I would recommend just make this side red again so that it's a nice gradual change in color. So see how it now gradually go from red to blue and not such a big jump. Let me just do this. But I also don't like this color, so let's change the color. I already have a preset here. Let me just load preset called ice cream. And also what I want to do is let's change the let's go to the pulse and adding another zero. So it's 10,000 and properties speed. Oh, speed is quite fast. So let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to change the, just the viewport. I want the size to be one. You can kind of like get a more natural idea. Nice. All right. So next I'd like to make it dropping on the floor and make it feel more dynamic. Let me just first show you what's going to happen if I add gravity. So I'm going to add gravity and you will see it will just go straight through. And then you will think that, oh, I can just add a simulation tag, right? Click on the plane, simulation tag, add a collider. 
and you would think that it will just fix things but actually you also need to do one more step you need to add a collider modifier so i'm going to add that and it basically tells this pulse that it will collide with the floor so let's move it see it's really sticky <laughs> and the reason for that is in each of these you'll see that there is friction there's friction here and there is a bounce here but no friction and the gravity is also pretty heavy but i think let's just change the friction on the plane to zero now it gets it's really fast all right so that's pretty good now let's think now let me show you how i did this i have this particle open where it looks like they are respecting each other's personal space and that is using the flocking modifier so if i render this out now you will see that they are still on top of each other see how they intersect they don't respect each other's space and to, to get that feeling that they respect each other's space so to get that we're going to use the flocking modifier i'm going to add that just under gravity i think it makes a difference this order let me move flock to the top Collide is at the bottom let's see if that makes any difference sometimes it doesn't make a difference for obvious reasons but all right so let me explain to you how flocking works i'm going to first just switch off the cohesion i'm going to switch off everything so basically flocking is the particle is looking at its nearest neighbor and it makes a decision if it wants to become a community with that neighbor or does it want to be separated from the neighbor so the first one is cohesion and that's i call it community and it's basically let me crank it up it's looking at the nearest neighbor and it makes a little group with that neighbor so if i crank it up a lot you'll see that it makes these little tiny pockets of particle communities and it finds the closest one and make a community and if, if you add this radius it's going to look at a, a bigger community and if you crank it really up there's going to be less communities so it's really where the particle is looking how far it is and these are really nice for if you want to make like anime type clouds or explosions or little viruses so it's very useful but for me i don't need that right now so i'm going to switch that off the separation one is more about looking at the nearest neighbor and see how far you want to be away from that neighbor so if you if i crank this up you'll see that they'll start separating and if the particle is a pixel or one centimeters in width it's going to look 1.3 centimeters around the particle so i'm going to put it at two and the strength maybe at five and you'll see that it starts having this really nice interaction with the particles and it pushes it away so it, it definitely has that really natural feeling of dynamics and if you render this you will see that it actually oh and then one thing too let me just change the size of the particle oh it's very big look it's four let's change it to 0.5 because i want the particle to be small and the radius around it to be more or less a centimeter so i can even make this very small like three or two maybe let's just make it 0.3 let's see what this looks like yes the smaller it is i feel the better it looks it's going to render out let's make it maybe this the particle a little bit bigger like five maybe and i'm going to show you how to customize these so they're not all the same size particles and also how to add a redshift material so that you can really customize it now i do find if you remove the strength or just kind of bring the strength down from the overall flock strength say 20.20 it also slows down a little the movement and give the other particles a chance to catch up in a way so that they can push each other out and it creates these really nice little almost looks like an eyeball or mandala or something cool and mesmerizing so let me just also change the size here and two so maybe you can see that and i'll pause just to render it out 
Also, just a quick reminder, if you want to render this out, you will have to cache it. So what caching means is it's just baking the whole animation into one Olympic or ABC. So you are going to tell it where to go. So make a nice folder, maybe on an external hard drive or something that's not your C drive. And then you basically just cache it. And this way, you will be able to render it to um, frames. So you'll see once you've cached it, then you can actually nicely scrub around back and forth without it losing any data. And um, yes, so caching, very important. I almost forgot to mention that. So now the next one I'm going to show you is this starburst effect that goes really out, but doesn't have a random scatter effect. And I'm going to hardly use any flock. So as I mentioned, we can use this DNA from the pulse one for the next one. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to switch off pulse one just so we have a nice clean shape have a nice clean canvas, but I'm going to keep the, let me just switch off my redshift render. I'm going to keep everything that we've just done. So I want my pulse to still have gravity and the color change and all that. So I'm going to keep it all. And this next emitter is going to be a spline emitter and you need a, obviously a spline to emit from. So the spline I'm going to use is going to be a circle. I'm just going to put it flat. I'm going to change it to 20 centimeters. And then I'm going to tell the spline emitter to use the geometry from the circle to emit from. I'm going to use, going to properties, I'm going to say radial. The speed can be like around 20. Emission is going to be along the spline and it's going to be in intervals of one centimeter. And then the, I want a pulse. The pulse is going to be, a, so I just start with a thousand for now. Duration is 30 and there's going to be a 15 frame gap. It's going to um, emit quite a few particles per frame, but then there will be like a little small gap just to give it a nice pulse effect. Now you'll see if I just play and it comes out, it's sort of the basic emitter default move. And it's because we haven't told it yet to use the characteristics of this DNA that we've already built. So I'm just going to go to emitter and in this property, see how it's using this particle group, this default particle group. I'm just going to replace that with our DNA pulse. And that way you don't have to do a lot of work. It's already kind of set up for you to now play around with. Now I don't need the flocking, so I'm going to switch that off. And one thing, and you'll see that it already starts to create these nice lines, but I feel like it's a little random still. So let's switch friction on and see if it helps. Helps a little bit. Let me just make the friction a little less. And then one thing that I couldn't figure out, to be honest, I was trying a whole bunch of effects. I wanted the, the particles only to emit from outside of the, the clone uh, outside of the spline. So I've played around with, if you look at the spline emitter, let's call this starburst just so we don't get confused. We can delete this particle group. So we're nice and clean. So if you look in the properties, you can say here, the one thing that was almost what I wanted was tangential, but then it spins and I don't want it to spin. And I'm pretty sure if you've figure out how to use any of these. Maybe you can change the direction. So it spins on a 90 degrees because it, I guess it makes sense because there are tangents on these little points. And I think that is why it's going on a spinning <laughs> mission, but I actually was very lazy and I just did this. Let me show you. I put it on radial and then I did a little cheat by just adding an attractor, adding it under my circle. Cause I wanted to make sure it's exactly in the middle. I'd make sure these are zeroed out. So an attractor attracts particles, but if you go here and you just go minus one, it's going to push them away. So that was like a, my little quick cheat to get it to go out, but I'm pretty sure there must be a much easier way to do this, but I, th I think it works for this specific thing. All right. So now I'm going to tweak a little bit. So let's make this slower and I have to hope I can remember everything I did. If you want more consistent lines, I think I've played around with the, the amount here. So you can have maybe like 10,000 and then becomes a little further. And also if you, um, add a few more, like four centimeters here, I think it's 
how much it's spread out on the spline. So it'll be more more of us even more of a starburst which is very nice and let's just for interesting sake see what happens if we press flock because it's obviously it's going to now start finding the neighbors to see how close they can be together or if they want to have cohesion or they want to have separation um but i do not actually want that i just want them to be a little bit influenced by each other's space so they're not so on top of each other so let's make that two centimeters and the strength maybe 0 0.02 super tiny and they're still on the floor which is great good all right so now let me show you if we're going to render this out we will get the same particles that we had for the other one that other pulse and maybe that's just fine for you it kind of looks like um embroidery or something but say you want arrows or something really custom that shoots out then you're going to have to add some and i'm doing this in redshift obviously so i'm going to use redshift specific geometry and the way to get to arrows or stripes or whatever you want to use you are going to need to add right click on the group and Go render tags, redshift object, RS object. And you'll see that everything will disappear. And you can kind of, there's a built in things like spheres and quads, little cubes and points and stuff. But if you want to customize it, you can just go here in custom objects. And I'm going to use, uh, let's for now use this uh, da, 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 capsule. Gonna make it a very tall skinny capsule make it like flat and then in my redshift object i'm going to add this and you will see it kind of works already usually i have to add let me see if i when i play it usually when i play it starts acting weirdly let's see what this looks like yeah that is actually the right direction surprisingly last time i did it i don't know why maybe it's because my this was not the right axis but if you put it somewhere else it's going to turn around and it's going to be a different uh, angle and then what you can do is using the look setting the look modifier put it underneath and you can tell it to m face the direction of the movement so if you have, say you have a cone, a cone is easy to know which direction it's traveling. So let's do this cone and I'm just going to make it super tiny, like two and one, maybe three and one. Let's add the cone in here. What's happening? Let's see. Oh, and let's make the cone also Z plus. See if this makes a difference. Z minus. What's happening here? Yeah, I guess it does work like I it should. <laughs> I'm actually surprised it's working like it should be working. I I thought it's going to. I thought we might need this look. Maybe we don't need this look. Let's see. If you see things not facing the right direction, just use that look modifier. But maybe we don't need it. So. One step less that you don't need. All right, so I, but I don't want the cone. I, I think that capsule is fine. But obviously now you're going to say, well, where is the color? Because the color is what made it cool. And the way to get that color is very easy. You are going to create a material, standard material, rich of standard material. You're going to add it to the capsule. Not, not the particles, not the group. It's very confusing. You have to add it to the capsule. And then double click. I'm going to double click in this area here. I'm going to search for data, color user data or data and plug it in to the color. So basically it's telling Redshift to use any data. It could be anything, but right now we do have particle data. So we're going to use the particle data. So basically it's using override what color is in right now. And it's using the colors of the particle. And let's also, what we should do is just, you'll see it's super shiny because it's like the standard texture. So let's just 
take the shininess down a little bit. All right, so you're going to have to let's uncheck this and let's go back to make it simulate again. And voila, now you have custom objects. And if you change the width here, you can make it nice and thick. Or you can even add another, say you want dots and um, or spheres and capsules. It's super tiny and let's just add the segments a little down so it doesn't need all that calculation. I'm going to add this texture also on the sphere and I'm adding the sphere, whoopsie, adding the sphere here. So now it's going to have spheres. You can't see it because it's really hidden, but I'm going to scale it up a little so you can see. Now uh, let's keep it at one. Also, let's change the star base. I think it's 10,000 is maybe a little too much for this amount and thickness. Let's see. Yeah, so you can now see how powerful this is. This could become anything and it kind of looks like candy, right? I'm going to add a bit less friction. Let's switch the friction off. Make the flocking just a little teeny tiny bit bigger might start getting a little crazy but I just want I don't like it when they're so on top of each other I still want the starburst effect so I don't want it to lose the the structural characteristics of the particle so I still want it to be straight but it's nice that they are respecting each other's space so let's maybe try a little bigger now I think it's gonna get too much we're not gonna lose that nice straight lines but this is also kind of just a, a different vibe right let's render this yeah, you know, it's the looser it gets, the more you add the flocking, the more, the less structural it's going to be. So if I switch it off and one thing I can do is maybe just make this much shorter so you can see the dots, the spheres. And also, okay, so flocking is off. Let's add friction and also let's maybe make this duration a little less. 20 maybe and see where this takes us and yeah just play around with these it's really fun oh pulse should be off so I feel like if you just switch off so just switching off um, flocking really helps making it feel more structural so it's all about you know what kind of vibe you want to go for this is more like a you know, like a mid-century starburst so yeah, play around, super fun. So the next one I'm going to show you just quickly how to do this one with a flowery shape. And I have decided to speed this up as well because I was taking way too long to noodle with all the pixels and the settings. And I think I can just quickly to give you the lowdown. The TLDR was that I added, um, I took the separation way down and I added cohesion. So the cohesion will bring the particles together. And then... Also, one big thing that I did was I changed the interval to one centimeters, the interval of the emission. And then I also added more particles in the pulse. So I think it was around 10,000. So that makes quite a big difference. And then the, the turbulence is actually the magic part. So you're going to add a turbulence inside the group and the scale is around 12 and the strength around five. And what else did I do? And then you just play around, have fun. This is really where the fun starts. You can play around with the capsule, what size the capsule was. I think I played around with all kinds of things inside this flower, but at the end I stuck with this long capsule that kind of makes it feel like embroidery or beadwork. So yeah, super fun. I will add this to my Gumroad, so you can download it if you're a little lazy and you just want to get it, but I would highly recommend do it yourself. And um, yeah, if you've done something cool that you're proud of, please tag me on Instagram. I just absolutely love to see what other people are doing with all my tutorials. So with that said, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Um, and then I hope to see you next time.